So the Ninth Circuit has held oral arguments in the California concealed carry ban case, and this law was passed in direct defiance to what the Supreme Court said in their Bruin decision. So let's talk about what happened during these arguments and what is likely gonna happen going forward. Now, before we jump this video, I don't wanna have a sponsor on this. Instead, I wanna promote someone, uh, the CRPA. They're not paying me to do this. I don't, I don't have any affiliation with the CRPA other than me being a named plaintiff in this case. Myself, along with Reno May, we joined as plaintiffs to help sue the state of California over SB2. CRPA operates very lean. They don't have a huge budget and they need your guys' help. They need your support to file these lawsuits to fight back against the state of California. So check them out. I will leave a link down below to CRPA. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, we need to talk about what is going on with California, their SB2 law and their new ban on concealed carry, which aims to essentially ban concealed carry statewide. The Ninth Circuit heard oral arguments today on whether or not they will overturn the preliminary injunction, which is currently in place. That preliminary injunction currently is protecting our ability to concealed carry and it's maintaining the status quo. But California is pushing for the Ninth Circuit to vacate that preliminary injunction. So we need to talk about what happened at the arguments today. And ultimately, we need to talk about my predictions on what is probably going to happen going forward. Now, this case we're going to be talking about, like I mentioned, is May v. Bonta. It's a case that Reno May and myself joined as plaintiffs. Uh, this is filed by CRPA. It's a case led by CRPA, which is the California Rifle and Pistol Association, and it's a challenge to SB2. There were two other cases that were also heard today in front of the Ninth Circuit that also deal with concealed carry bans. There was the FBC Carrillero case, and then also there was the Wolford case, which is dealing with Hawaii's concealed carry ban and that law that they passed in response to Bruin. Now, in our case, we received a preliminary injunction, which is halting the enforcement of California's ban at least until... Ultimately, this case is decided on the merits by Judge Carney. But as we all know, the state of California is never going to let a pro to a win sit. So they immediately filed an appeal up to the Ninth Circuit, and then they also sought an administrative stay. Now, a motions panel in the Ninth Circuit did in fact grant the administrative stay, but then the merits panel ultimately did remove that stay. And ultimately what that all leads to is the fact that right now, as the law sits, SB2 is not being enforced. It's currently blocked. And the concealed carry laws remain the same as they were, and essentially the status quo is the same as if SB2 never was passed. But what we're currently facing with this oral argument and what's being ruled on by this Ninth Circuit is whether or not that preliminary injunction will stand. Now, in our case and many of these other cases, what is being challenged is the sensitive locations portion of SB2. It's not a challenge to the CCW application process. Our lawsuit deals directly with these sensitive locations. Well, now the preliminary injunction, which is currently in place by Judge Carney, is being challenged in front of a three-judge panel in the Ninth Circuit. And this three-judge panel is not great for us. It's you know not a pro to a panel. It's probably a three to zero uh, decision against us. But we need to talk about what happened in the arguments today, a few main things that developed, and what's ultimately probably going to happen after this decision. Now, the first thing that was focused on and was really emphasized by the Ninth Circuit is what should the Ninth Circuit do in light of how the Second Circuit, you know, a different court of appeals, how they've already ruled in the New York CCIA case, which is the Antonyuk case. The Antonyuk case is a case filed by Gun Owners of America over in the Second Circuit. A shout out to Steven Stamboulier and, you know, Olson and all those guys over there at GOA who are doing an awesome job. There's already a lawsuit to a similar law coming out of New York that's been decided by the Second Circuit. And ultimately, the Ninth Circuit here wants to know what should they do? Should they just simply follow what the Second Circuit said? California argued that the Ninth Circuit should follow what the Second Circuit did, but they should go even further and find that the private property restrictions are in fact also constitutional and that California should be able to put in place this vampire rule. The Ninth Circuit seemed very concerned about opening up a circuit court split on this issue, which is important mainly because circuit court splits enhance the probability of the Supreme Court stepping in early and ultimately reviewing these types of issues. The Ninth Circuit judges were also concerned that upholding the private party restriction would also create a more limited circuit split, but yet still a circuit court split on that one provision. 
Now, of course, CRPA and the other pro 2 attorneys emphasize that the Ninth Circuit should simply not adopt what the Second Circuit decision was in that Antonio case because, again, the Second Circuit got that Bruin analysis completely wrong and they came to the wrong conclusion in the Antonio case. For example, the Second Circuit based their opinion on isolated territorial laws that did not reflect the understanding of, you know, the concealed carry at the time of the Second Amendment's being ratified. Also, the Second Circuit said carry could be banned simply because a place was crowded or there were a lot of people. Um, you know, maybe there was a mass of people just because it was crowded. Uh, the Second Circuit, there could be restrictions and that would make it a sensitive location. Now, of course, this type of idea was expressly rejected in Bruin and in that opinion by Justice Thomas. And there was a bunch of other statements by other justices like uh, Justice Roberts, who also rejected that type of notion. But simply, that's what the Second Circuit came to. There were also some very interesting discussions about potentially when the government can ban carry at sensitive locations. The state claims just because an area is deemed sensitive by the government itself, well, then they can ban carry outright. Now, FBC's attorneys pointed to the fact that traditionally, if an area was deemed sensitive and was off limits for carry by a government and the government decided to act in, in loco parentis, which is simply just you know a fancy Latin term for the government taking control of the area, acting as a parent or in place of the parent. Well, ultimately, the burden then would be on the government to provide protection, to provide for self-defense if they're taking away the individual's ability for self-defense. But instead, what is happening here with states like California and New York is the states are saying, well, these areas are high risk, they're sensitive locations, therefore you cannot carry and protect yourself, but oh, by the way, we're also not gonna do anything for you. We're not gonna provide you know, armed security or anything like that. We're not gonna protect you. We also saw California's attorney walk out the new argument that is also being used right now in the Antonyuk case in front of the Supreme Court. In Antonyuk, New York argues that the CCIA passed just eight days after Bruin in that decision, which again was in direct response to Bruin, is not implicated or is not impacted by that decision at all because they claim Bruin was an exceptional case. Here, California is trying to walk out the same argument, saying that Bruin has no impact on any of these new laws that were passed. Then there was also a very interesting section and very concerning in my eyes, where there was a conversation between a couple of the judges and then also the state of California's representative, where they seem to be taking the position that now under Bruin, the only burden a state has to justify their restriction and the type of historical analogs that they have to put forward is just simply one single historical analog. They only have to put forward one historical piece of evidence to justify the restriction. And if they just have one historical piece, just maybe one rough analog as support for the restriction, well, then they pass the Bruin standard. That, of course, is not true. It's an absurd argument. It's probably one of the first times I've seen that pop up. Now, the last thing that I want to cover, which happened during these Ninth Circuit arguments, was kind of the absurd arguments that happened with the state of Hawaii, them trying to justify their piece of concealed carry bans. Hawaii claimed that the state's tradition of never allowing concealed carry should simply override what the Supreme Court said in Bruin, that the Bruin standard should not apply. This is similar to the whole spirit of aloha in that whole argument that we saw play out with the Hawaii Supreme Court in their recent decision. And simply they're trying to take these isolated state territorial, you know, traditions to override the overarching national history and the overarching national language in the Supreme Court. Now, I don't think any of these judges here on the panel buy, you know, bought that. They simply pushed back against that saying, well, wouldn't that lead to a bunch of isolated state laws where the Second Amendment is treated very differently state by state. We don't do that with the First Amendment. Why would we do that here? So I don't think that type of argument is going to run. But still, ultimately, I think what's going to happen here is that the Ninth Circuit is simply just going to follow what the Second Circuit said in the Antonio case. I think they're going to vacate Judge Carney's preliminary injunction, except for the whole catch-all provision dealing with private properties and that whole provision. I think this is most likely going to be a three to zero decision in favor of the state of California. Now, CRPA has already stated very clearly that if the three judge panel rules against them, if they vacate the preliminary injunction, well, then they're going to seek a writ of cert directly to the Supreme Court. They are not going to file for Ninth Circuit en banc review. Instead, they're going to go directly to the Supreme Court, which I agree that should be what happens in this case. 
So that's just a quick breakdown of what's going on with California and SB2, this whole concealed carry issue. This also covers a little bit of what happened with Hawaii. It deals a little bit with what's going on with New York because all of these are interplaying. All of these are intertwined. They deal directly with state responses after the Bruin decision, trying to ban concealed carry. And we're gonna have to see how this plays out. But again, go support CRPA. Again, I will leave links down below where you can donate. So if you like this video and you like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of 2A news. But as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget this nation was built by armed scholars and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.